business. With a good understanding of what our customers desire and providing beyond expectation, that is how Virginia Food thrives. It is that same passion for our customers that has convinced us to transform Virginia Food. Virginia Food has been in existence for more than 40 years. We are a processed meat company. We do canned meat products and frozen meat products. But because of our commitment to our customers, we have gone beyond just being a processed meat company, but become an ultimate food solution. This is our primary goal, to create the best food products for every household or business. We pride ourselves with a research and development team as we can innovate different products for different market segments. Our core strength is product innovation. Virginia Food aims to deliver new products and is capitalizing on this endeavor now more than ever. Virginia Food is grounded on four pillars. The pillar of product, supply, service, and relationship. The pillar product is represented by a research and development team as well as our quality assurance. Nothing leaves the plant without passing our standards in quality and product safety. Virginia Food began as a backyard poultry farm in Mandawe back in the 1960s. Since then, the company has grown to become one of the most exciting food manufacturers in the country. The pillar of supply is represented by our plants and operations. Here at Virginia Food, we invest in technology and innovation. We want to assure our customers that our products are efficiently produced at optimum cost. Virginia Food serves different types of households within a broad demographic, from families in the province to the millennials in their condos. We also serve various sizes of food business operation, ranging from barbecue stalls to catering companies. Virginia Food has satisfied the needs of customers from all walks of life. The pillar of service is represented by our distribution and logistics department. Since the Philippines is an archipelago within the Typhoon Belt, there are a lot of servicing disruptions, making it difficult to ship products within the country. But because we have depots across key cities in the Visayas and Mindanao, Virginia Food has maintained a level of inventory that will assure our customers of uninterrupted service. Just recently, we launched our express delivery service, bringing our quality products right at your doorstep. Our comprehensive range of food and other products now have a nationwide reach, even venturing far beyond our borders to our Southeast Asian neighbors. The pillar of relationship is represented by our sales and marketing department. This is where we forge partnerships with our customers as we try to understand their need so we can give value to them. More than just food company, we believe in cultivating a brand relationship with our customers by providing the best customer support to our partner businesses. Over the years, our business has grown exponentially, making Virginia Food one of the most profitable food manufacturers in the country. But none of that would be possible without our people, who share our passion for success. Virginia Food believes that our future starts with our people. That's why we make it a point to focus on their needs and cultivate their true potential. Virginia Food is all about innovation and quality, but our values do not end there. We give back what we can through community outreach and environment protection programs. The culture of Virginia Food are founded on different values. The values of uh, integrity, the values of passion, excellence, and creativity. Customers, quality products, efficient distribution, and good values. That's Virginia Food. Now ready to serve you even more with our latest innovation, the ultimate food solution. Basta Virginia! complex and interconnected world, there are unprecedented opportunities for innovation and far more uncertainty and risk. The COVID-19 pandemic has challenged organizations around the world to think and act quickly to tackle a set of once-in-a-lifetime circumstances. The coronavirus crisis has meant that more and more organizations are asking questions about how they become more resilient and tackle other long-tail risks, such as climate change, cyber threats, and the wealth and health gap. 
The stakes for companies and communities around the world have never been higher. To help organizations be better equipped to make better decisions in a highly volatile world, we will be focusing our efforts on four major priorities. Navigating new forms of volatility. Simply reacting to events is no longer enough. Organizations will need to understand how business changes and external factors will shape risk. Building a resilient workforce of employees has never been more important. One that is more adaptable, able to manage stress and maintain productivity through uncertainty. Rethinking access to capital. This pandemic has highlighted how organizations will need to find new ways to uncover value, scale the potential of assets, and protect them in new ways. Addressing the underserved. Building more strategic and targeted solutions for underserved industries, economies, communities, and individuals. Focusing on these four core areas can take businesses and communities beyond the new normal to achieve the new better. Aided by digital technology and analytics, guided by innovation, informed by new perspectives on risk and uncertainty, and a deeper understanding of the gaps in our societies and economies, we have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to have a significant and powerful impact. And we will take it. By focusing on these four core priorities, we will be able to help our clients make better decisions and chart a path towards the new better. To find out more about preparing for what comes next, check out Aon's Global Report. Paano nga ba natin masasabi na ang mga magulang ay naging mabuti sa kanyang anak? Uy, kuya! Sa atensyong ginibigay nila? hindi kaya Anak? sa pagtuturo ng tama at mali. Tatay, tapos na po ako. Salamat po. Sapat na ba? Na? Na sila ay tapat. Sobra yung bayad mo. Ha, ganun po ba? Thank you po. Para patunayan lang, Dito na ako, ma. Uy, Dad. Na sila. Nakawi ka na Kapat pala. Na ba? Ay karapat dapat. Anong ginagawa mo dyan? Kumain ka na ba? Tara, kain tayo sa loob. Siguro nga. Uy. Masusukat Bisita. ang pagiging magulang. Kaya masarap kumain. Kapag aalaga sa kanilang Sorry. anak. Oo naman, no? Thanks, ma. Pero... Paano kung walang anak? Natutumba sana ng kanilang pag-aaruga. namin naagapan ang pagsali ng dugo. Naging matindi ang pagdurugo sa lab ng kanyang katawan. Dahilan ito ng kanyang tagi ang pagpano. <laughs> ang sigurado ko lang, Bago sila maging mabuting magulang, ay naging mabuti silang tao. Na kahit gaano kahirap ang buhay, ay hindi nila kayang gumawa ng mali. Hindi nanlalamang sa kapwa at handang tumulong sa nangangailangan. Kaya naman, sigurado ako na sila ay magiging mabuting magulang sa'yo. 
Bunso. Successful, you need to have this blind faith and belief in your future and in yourself. Hello everyone, I'm Siddharth Malhotra. I'm an actor in the Indian film industry. I started off as a model just to make pocket money. Trying to pay my rent, every hurdle that I had, I learned something from it. Don't stop. Good afternoon, PMAP Cebu, partners, members, and viewers. Welcome to the critical role of vaccination uh, learning session. And um, to welcome us further to this afternoon's um, learning session, may I call on uh, the 2021 PMAP Cebu President, Ms. Grace Iligan, PhD.
Good afternoon, everyone. In line with our quest to help our members and the general public to have a deeper understanding on the importance and the impact of, of the vaccine to ourselves and to our family and to the community, and also to educate us further, rather being updated about the Delta variant, we decided to have this webinar where we invited credible resource speakers who will be properly introduced in a while to discuss about the subject matter. They will share to us essential facts that will surely be useful to all of us. Thanks to PP Vera Chris Billiamore and PP Mike, who is also currently the Cebu and uh, National Trustee, Mike Pudines, who help us uh, in inviting this two most credible resource speakers. We are likewise grateful to, to them, to both of them, because despite our very short notice amidst their very, very busy schedules, our speakers accepted our invitation. Thanks also to the ever supportive Avengers team, our PMAP technical team headed by Direct J.M. Gales, and with Ms. Chai, Ms. Odette, Ms. Vera, Ms. Meludz and team, and with Sir Ian, who is also our host for this afternoon. And to all of you, thank you so much for joining us in this webinar. And hopefully, whatever you will learn this afternoon, you can also impart to your peers, to your family, and to your friends, so that uh, we can all contribute in our very little way in addressing this pandemic. So welcome to this webinar, The Critical Role of Vaccination to Our Family and Community. I hope uh, we will all learn together. Oh, Tagang salamat, maayong hapon sa tanan. To God be the glory. Back to you, Sir Ian. Thank you, President Grace. COVID-19 vaccines have shown strong real-world effectiveness, no? whether it's Sinovac, Pfizer, um, Moderna, AstraZeneca, whatever the brand is, it has proven to, have to effectively prevent severe COVID-19 uh, diseases. This afternoon, to, dri to drive home the message of uh, that vaccination saves lives is uh, one of is the uh, one of the um, leaders of the leading organization in promoting the critical role of vaccination in the community. And our next speaker is the associate vice president for brand development group of the Ramon Aboitis Foundation Incorporated. Friends, PMAP Cebu members, please help me welcome Ms. S.T. Plunkett. Good afternoon, everyone. This would now be the point wherein I would channel in um, Siyang Snow. Can you hear me and can you see me? This is our current version of Spirit of the Glass, sort of, I think. Yeah, yeah, I, I can be seen, no? I imagine. I'd like to request for access. Thank you. I shall be sharing my screen. It's an honor to be here today. Thank you for the invite. Thank you especially to Sir Mike Godinas for inviting me to be here with you this afternoon. You all would know that um, the Ramona Boydis Foundation has been very active in supporting the Department of Health no, in, in really um, putting out communication out there for us to combat the effects of the pandemic. Um, one moment, let me just ensure this is coming through correctly. There you go. All right. So I, um, as I was introduced, I'm very happy to represent the Ramona Boydis Foundation. This year, it will be our 55th year of touching people and shaping the future. This is our tagline as a foundation. We are known and we embody you know, to be architects of change. That's the brand idea. I'm coming from a perspective of brand development groups. I'd be speaking a lot in the, in the perspective of communication in the next 20, 25 minutes. 
um, as architects of change no, in, in, in RAFI, we believe in elevating the dignity of man through solutions that enable people to achieve higher levels of well-being. I'm pretty sure all of you in this room share a very similar mission. You know? We are all here to elevate the well-being of each other, and that's where we're gathered today. It is our brand promise you know, to provide the architecture for participation. We often, you would, we often work with fellow NGOs or big organizations, local government units. Every, I'm sure at one point or another, uh, we have worked with you all, not, um, not most of you at least, in the same efforts no, for vaccination specifically. Uh, shout out to IntelliCare and PMAP. We've, you have been with us from the very beginning of this effort. So this afternoon, I'm going to share with you specifically on the efforts not geared towards uh, information education and communication campaign. This is within our humanitarian disaster um, preparedness and response team, HTPR. So this is essentially what we call no, our why. This is our um, campaign title, Comunidad Contra COVID. This is what we believe as architects of change, um, bringing people together you know, to combat the pandemic and its effects together. This is how we would we have been doing it since last year. So to share with you, we're now on our third phase, getting into our fourth phase no, um, of this campaign. So last year in March, very immediately upon lockdown, we launched the Comunidad Contra COVID and we identified who would it be that we would uh, focus our attention to, you know, who do we target to speak to? And we, um, it's a very broad scope of uh, audience. We feel we have to talk to the progressive thinkers, no? the educated, the frequent flyers, meaning the active people in community. We also know that we need to speak there, you know, very deeply to working groups, no? um, like, like all of us in this room, to athletes, perhaps to college students, Again, those with active lifestyles and definitely, most definitely closest to the heart of Rafi um, are those, you know, who often get forgotten or marginal, the marginalized for that matter. Um, that has to be defined well, no, but um, for us, you want to focus well of, on this particular communication to the urban poor, to the, um, to the IPs, no, specifically the Vajals, the grassroots, our beneficiaries. So we... The communication that we have, uh, that I'm happy to share with you, so perhaps you could also pass it on, no? are, are really through, through these um, various segments. And the way we communicated it, we kind of pinned down our um, hashtag, no? so to speak, we all will speak the hashtags now, or in another way of saying it, our call to action. For the phase one, which was last year, we launched it last year. I'm gonna go through it one by one with you to share on the various initiatives. On our phase one, our tagline was spread kindness. That's really how we felt the only way to move forward. This was triggered when there was a lot of threat on um, hoarding. You know, you're, if you remember all of that, go hoard of toilet paper, go hoard of um, the lata, bugas, everything and all of, you know, if, if we all operated in, in that manner, nothing will be left behind, you know, for the rest of us. So our tagline at the time was really spread kindness, kindness to each other, kindness to time, kindness to ourselves. So that was the whole um, phase one, no? that's how we communicated. When we transitioned to phase two, mostly this was um, towards the end of last year, no? so good Q, end of Q3, that's when we launched naman the Ay Kumpian Sabay. No, we we um, produced a, a uh, music video. We will be sharing with you the links after this. Um, and it's mostly that because at that point, you know, we were already off lockdown. During the spread kindness point, we were the first. Grabe ang Cebu Ato, you know, if you remember Barangay Luz, we, we, we topped the chart, the chart in the Philippines. But it was contained very well. You know, the EOC and Cebu City was very good. Mandawi, Lapulapo, everybody worked together. The province worked together. And so we were worried that at that point, the kumpiansa na, so then we launched the Ay Kumpiansa Bay, just to make sure by the time we hit Christmas, we'll still be safe. And then this year, this is our third phase. Now it's when the vaccines are ready. So our call to action is, Busa magpapakunata. And 
to be well already launched just end of June, no? and we're going to be rolling this out. Finally, now our hashtag, I didn't include it here yet because um, you will be finding out about it very soon. Now it's shots, shots of hope, no? because now we would like to be hopeful to move forward. So to discuss a little bit on our phase one on um, Comunidad Contra COVID, spread kindness, we, this is, we, we hinged it no, on our brand essence of touching lives, shaping the future. It's designed to touch people, and when, at, especially at that point no, during the, the pandemic, during quarantine. Um, that way, everyone would be mindful. No? Um, if at the end of the day, everything else is uncertain, no, none of us expected it. None of us really uh, was, was caught in surprise no? um, how it all happened so very quickly. So that's how we really promoted to spread kindness. And how did we do that? One of the things that we did offline, nakanandili siya online, despite the fact na nag-lockdown, we ensured na ang areas in Cebu, labi na katong, you know, the ones that would be hard to reach areas, we had a mobile Hunawan, we call it, a Hunawan station. So it was a Hunaw campaign, that's what we launched. This Some areas nga na ay access to water, uh, we talk to the, we work with the LGUs, with the barangays, we tap the water source with them. We also work with MCWD as a matter of fact. Um, so, claro to, no, in a partnership, um, it was legit, uh, of course. Um, so we installed sinks there so that the constituents would be able to wash their hands because that was one of the very first thing we needed to do. We needed to ensure we need to wash hands and they should know how to do it. Katong dili era, dali dali nga pagkahugas, but it's a 21 second, um, at minimum, no, to wash hands. With that, we even also put out jingles worth uh, 21 seconds that's playing along uh, areas that we had the Hunao campaign. And Telecare was our partner here. I remember um, IPI also was one of our partners. There were uh, we had uh, partners who provided soaps for us. No, um, PMAP was definitely as an organization was there for us even at the very early on last year. And we had a very good number. No, we reached about 26,000. Plus, plus total users, no? 10,000 individuals in northern Cebu, 15,000 individuals in the in the southern um, barangays, uh, because we also did a mobile version of the actual sync version. We realized that nobody could come out. Uh, we had to also pivot, no? Um, so we rented big, uh, mga, what do you call it? Uh, not a van, eh. um, but anyway, the small jeepney version, multicab, multicab. And then we put a big tank of water at the back and then a Hunawan station. And it goes around barangays, no? Just so na agay maka, na ay facility na makahuga silag flowing water. That's what's important, no? So that's something that was solidly offline. Even if nag lockdown na, we were able to do that for the community. And this is how it looked, no? Uh, we also worked with doctors, no? um, we recorded their messages, um, we played it on, we called it a recorida. So the mobile Hunawan campaign, it would play, besides the jingle, it would play mes uh, para marag, um, messages from the doctors. Sila mismo record ana on what to do, how to keep safe. The recorida would uh, part no? uh, um, in various barangays until mahuman ang buong message and while people could come and wash their hands. So this was some snapshots of where our uh, mobile mobile Hunawan station went. No, went to Busay, Apas, and Roque, all the way up to Pitos, Kamagayan, Mabolo, Lahug. So north and south. Pani pato because technically they can't cross north, north land, south, south land. You know, when it was absolutely strict. So we also worked with the LGU to get the permit. Now, please, you know, have our liquidity be allowed to roam around the city, and it was given the permit. Um, so this was really a collaboration no? as architects of change. It was not just one institution who did this, but we collaborated with the LGU, we collaborated with the doctors no? and our private partners to make it happen. And here, later on, maybe Jam also could share in, in our chat box no? the, the jingle. We invite you to participate in a TikTok challenge. Also, this was launched last year in March. So there's a, it's 21 seconds, exactly good enough for you to make sure that your hands are completely washed. So um, by the second phase, no, um, again, this was mga third quarter, na, no? so middle half of the year, 
when things were going well for us here in Cebu. And we were able to rise above it. So that was beautiful that we were successfully able to curb it. No, the transmission was at bay. Um, everyone was, everyone really responded no, to the call of the community as well. So at this point, that was before Christmas, we felt, oh, I compiang sa langit. So we have put out these messages very strongly in various different areas. No, here, Sir Mike. Um, we put out a lot of webinars. That was when uh, June, July. So every week we had webinars. We have, we invited um, uh, pediatricians even no, to speak about what to do, you know, what to feed your children what, on lockdown. Or now moving forward, we invited uh, obstetricians, no, what to do when you're going to give birth during the pandemic. Creative people, we also invited them. Nana is no entrepreneurs. So there's a lot of efforts, mostly like what we are doing now, just for more substantial information and correct information. Um, later on, I'll share with you the theories of communication no, that we that guided us in going in in putting out our various campaigns. So these were our um, efforts in Trimedia, print, radio, online. Um, we created carry drawings um, to put out, shared it all the way to the media outlets no, that they could also use um, and, um, and provided other other organizations as well, no, of their need for any webinars no, that, that was uh, that's relevant. So this is a, an example of the comics. We also put out comic strips up on billboards. Um, at this time, Lala Move has these comics distributed in every home in, in their deliveries. No? So we have partnered with Lala Move and JCI. So it's a, a tri, uh, tripartite no partnership. Put out public announcement. We've worked very closely with uh, EOCs in all of the cities as well to make sure no, a billion, no, to all those who would look at our sites and also be aware for extra support for the for the LGUs, we've also provided them with materials like this. Um, all hinged also within DOH guidelines. So these are all samples, no? Um, I and really invite you to click on the links later that we'd share. The one at the bottom right, this is Star Studded, no? Cebu artists who sang the Dungan song. It's uh, in collaboration with Kadasig, Sila Jude Kita Mundo. And I invite you to, to share it around because it, it really has a beautiful message. And there's also wear a mask jingle and silolo carling. So now this is the point I'd share with you the theories of communication that we used no, to, to attempt at least to um, make a massive number of people get on board on the messaging. So one of it was really reasoned action. That's a, a theory wherein we use experts, voice of experts no? and authority to put out a message that this is what we do. Because at this point with the juxtaposition of news, no, it, that was very difficult to know which one was saying, right, what is the right statistics? Where are we at? That was very difficult. Um, who do we listen to, et cetera? I'm sure you've also felt that at one point. So for us, we wanted that, no, the reasoned action and we hinge it on the voice of experts. So we used, um, as mentioned earlier, you know, it was doctors, we used their messages and their communication also. We didn't put out anything on our own, but really we used the voice of experts. And we also used the voice of authority. Who are these? These are our lolo carlings no, in the community. If the older people could say it and articulate it, there's the data that said, ang mas effective rin nga influencer are your friends, not your family, no? So um, this is why we also put out their messages coming from the eldest person no, in the family, in the group. So tambag ni Lolo Carling. This is one of our strategies. Um, fear management is the second one that we put out. Para, you know, instead of us getting scared and not doing anything, we also put out messages there you know, to allay fears. That was one of the things that the doctors also were very mindful about. So when we thought, you know, what kind of messages do you put out? Sometimes mahadlok magud sila kung doctor. So, you know, the... And I would like to thank, really, you know, I worked with um, Doc Emek here and uh, Doc, Dr. Karen Woolbright. Uh, ang ilang mga message, it was really geared towards allaying fears. Pwede mahadlok, hindi sila ma-intimidate po. So that was another, the third um, theory of communication that we, that guided us. And then finally, it's social networking, which is what I'll share with you, no, on our third phase. On our third phase, this is this year, it's really 
social mobilization no, that uh, made this happen. Can bakuna na magod ni and it it is not just information. And like they, our first two phases nga, we just really you know put out inf- correct information as much as we could, uh, peer management as was as much as we could. Pag abut sa busa magpabakuna ta, there's actually now it has to you have to transform it no into action. So our objective was to po- support and encourage now appropriate uptake of the vaccine for herd immunity. And we wanted to promote a call to action that would convince them no, on the efficacy of the vaccine. And to continue promoting all of the things we promoted from phase one, no, mang, mang hunaw, mag wear og mask. Eh. Sometimes they think, basi pag nagpabakuna, okay na, right? So we have to have all these three objectives in mind when we launch our third phase, which is this year, not beginning of the year. Um, and all of our materials, we run it through DOH 7. No? So we work very closely with the DOH to ensure wala sad mi gud ning simang. No? And everything, since this is very sensitive, we don't know when the vaccines come, etc. And I priority, prioritization list. It's also, we treaded it very delicately. No? Okay. There's a lot of things not within our control. So what we did, we really aligned it with the strategy of the Department of Health. We had, you know, we attended meetings, national um, from even the OH national nilang communication plan, we sat down with them. You know, we looked at also how their crisis management is going to be. That way, we could also support that. So that's that was essentially you know how we were guided you know, for for the third phase of this particular um, campaign, wherein na anagi kuan na anagi say transformation into action ang tanan nga atong gipang inform, gi disseminate, o gi educate. No, they have to get vaccinated. So just now, just a little bit of review. I'm sure Dr. Lorece in a little bit will be able to give us a lot more information, no? perhaps on the data. But just quick, quick, quick lang, Annie, you know, we're about half a million now no? in um, the, the seven LGUs identified that's densely populated. Um, first dose, there's 331 people now. Second dose, there's 94. Kami ang challenge kay, um, kuwang pa, there's a lot of eligible vaccinees na wala pag siya mabakunahan. I think we're about... 80%, no, one is to 10 in Cebu City, one is to 12, pa one, eligible, one vaccinated to 12 eligible in Mandawe, so mga 80% pata. So we're continually doing it, hopefully, hopefully, if, you know, as we continue our efforts to, to campaign, and we need all your help, uh, feel free to use the materials, no, that, that we have created along with our partners, um, just so maka-invite kita, no, for vaccination, para it is not just us who will be safe, but really it's the whole community. So this is just our quick, quick facts, no? So just to, to run through it, um, ang na vaccinated na sa Metro Cebu LGU, Cebu City 7.9. Ah, hold on, na. Ang fully vaccinated lang akong basahon kay para. That's what we aspire for. 7.19% fully vaccinated. Mandawe 4.83 fully vaccinated. Lapu-Lapu 2.45. Talisay 1.12. Consolation 0.75, Minglanilia 1.38%, Naga is 0.97%. So taas taas pa ni atong daganon para, especially nga mubalik po sila second dose. We cannot also this, ano, where just be complacent na basi nagpabakuna na first dose. Okay na ta. No, really, what we are really aiming for is full back to back, vax to vax, gin siya. So the two doses of vaccination would have to be completed. I'd just like to share this slide with you. This came out in just July 5th, no? So our recent data, nato. just so we are aligned where we're at and how much more work there is left for all of us to do. Um, so with this, sa atong busa, magpabakuna ta, ang una yun na mo, ano, you know, we came up with 14, imagine ha, 14 ka videos, puro doctors in all of their dif- different specializations from mga PT to sports doctors to um, uh, ortho to mga... On ko, tanana. And then they are the only ones who, in fact, mobilized it. When akong pasabot that the third theory of communication is really social networking, wherein kitang tanan, no? we, we kind of, we are consultative, and I'll, I'll give you more details on that. Not only are we consultative, but we're working on it together. We mobilize it socially. Because if only it's one entity, but with the help of the doctors, they even they, they videoed themselves, no? They videoed each other. See, Dr. Emig Ani, she was so great in compiling all of this together. Serafi, what we did, we just really, you know, put it together, edited it, put it, uh, released it, no? Para, para, paan siya, consumable, to the public. So there were 14 videos to begin with. 
and then more and more na no we 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 came up with bakuna basics no and again run through the OH ni Shat and sila we've worked a lot with um, UP Mass um, CMS, CMS all of the organizations of doctors no para gyud na enhance patong communication the archdiocese came on board you see that at the bottom left they have that's they gave it to us for free we put up billboards not as pardo um, JCI as mentioned to you we also partnered with them so it's really comunidad contra covid there's really no other way to describe it but it's you know the whole community um fighting against the the virus and and so this this is our messaging no busak magpabakuna ta you are the key you are essential the message here is it naginimo you know it's up to you it it is your decision you can make this a safer world you can make this a better place and this will bring me na to the one i have briefly gave you an a little bit of glimpse in the beginning no at this point that's where we're at now we're looking at our fourth phase no the shots of hope we're in hopefully we're almost crossing no? we're almost at the bend no of um seeing how things could hopefully be better um if there's nothing else that we could offer the community at this point it would really just be hope no for us to believe that we could get up again and could live our lives um, like how we store in fact even more you know an amplified reality to to live at our lives so just to share with you according to the social weather station report you no know, um for the first quarter you would see how people have gotten to be more pessimistic the red are the pessimistic ones the greens are the worst is behind us ilang tubag you know so medyo optimistic ning rise ang optimism atong november 2020 this was before christmas this was when pfizer said na you know there's already a vaccine so there it was hopeful but and then it dipped it dipped so much so that it was second highest after july of 2020 until may 20 may 2 2021 no? people again felt down you no know, they feel that the world the worst is yet to come and this is why we would like to promote you no know, the shots of hope to make sure to make everybody feel kita as a community as one society as humanity you know we could be there for each other to raise each other up you no know, um, and to go on magpabakuna jud ta so we can makalabang ta ani so the shots of hope this is a lot of artwork that you will be seeing um again this is an we launched it on the 29th, no? We launched it um, in Ayala along with uh, other major stakeholders. Uh, we will slowly do this among the, the seven LGUs. This is so madungan you know, how do people feel about it? Something real to them, um, they will see it. And we would be able to put out a lot of um, messages of hope through art. And we've partnered with a Cebu-based mga visual artist as well and, and other local groups in local communities. So this is now, this is the launch, launching night. No, we launched it um, with the tourism commissioner, uh, Attorney Joy, um, uh, Vice Mayor Rama was also there. So this is something that we would be uh, working on no, in the next few months. And I'll end this uh, sharing no, with you, our um, beautiful guests, with a quote from our beloved founder, no, Don Ramon avoid this when he said the dignity of man is best respected by helping him realize his hopes and by sharing with him the burdens of his fears so i'll end with this quote from our founder and us in rafi this is how we want to be no we we want to be with our communities we want to be with the whole of humanity so that we all realize our hopes shots of hopes yay and to share with everybody the burden of your fears because we too carry it with you. And by being able to communicate this, to educate and to inform on how important vaccination is so that all of us will be safe, um, we, um, we are here no, to, to share it with you. It, even the information that we have, we'll gladly share it with you, our collaterals, so that all of us no, would be able to rise above the crisis.
So this ends my presentation. Thank you very much. Back to you, Ian. Thank you, Ms. St. And uh, and um, and uh, you know, as someone who just received his second dose, no, this morning, uh, actually, uh, I, I'm I'm very uh, appreciative of all the efforts, no, that Ramon Aboitis Foundation has really, uh, you know, uh, um, turned out for the community. And um, we we have a question here, Ms. St. No, um, how did you incentivize? Uh, the the um, in your in your organization the getting of vaccines no because um, you know uh, there there are a lot of organizations and and a lot uh, in, in especially in other countries no they have in, incentivized uh, the getting of vaccines so in in, in your experience uh, were you able did you have a similar um, 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 incentive or program. For us in the organization, the way we did it was before we put it out, the vaccine awareness, we started from within. So that was something we knew na before we could convince others, we have to convince ourselves. So that we, they, our human capital, no, led by Sir Mike, no, they were the ones who really got the pulse. We also were very um, respectful no, of the decisions of everyone because these are at the end of the day voluntary. Right? So we, we put out... Uh, a pulse, a, a survey, no? How does everybody feel? And to be honest with you, it was alarmingly low. There were not a lot of, especially those out there on, on field, no? Um, we have a microfinance that spans, you know, all over Visayas, Mindanao. Some of them are very hesitant. So what did we do? Before we incentivized, we really strengthened our information campaign. Mauna, Dr. Loreche, oh my gosh, she was saying, thank you so much, Ato Doc, no? That was very powerful. See, um, Dr. Brian Lim, and, um, uh, I have another doctor in mind, but yeah, um, we all, that was something we did Be before we incentivized, we really ensured that times that no bag gawas before we go out and tell others in the community, us first, if we are not convinced, then we won't be so confident. And we did that. And because of the voice of the experts, because of all of the generous time they gave to us, and it wasn't one, huh? it wasn't one webinar, it was a lot of constant webinars in different levels, Tagalog, Bisaya, in English, you know, in all of that package. But before we incentivized, we just really informed, informed them with the correct information from voice of experts. And then our survey, as, as provided by our human capital, it just really rose no, from, from hesitant, from mostly hesitant, all the way up. When we got into 80%, we're actually good. Uh, you know, um, what we did, I, I believe, no, for me too, when I got vaccinated, we gave out, uh, parang, um, well, we're very su su super su supportive. Our, our, the way we were enrolled and enlisted for, for the vaccination with the Project Balik Buhay, that's so seamless. It was easy for us, even for our dependents. So that's another incentive because we could sign up our, our dependents. No? And then the second, when we got there, we were provided food. You know, they fed us, you know, they gave us. I know, I must say, there was um, breakfast, there was snacks, so that was a good incentive. No, we got shirts. Um, and we were given a free day the next day after vaccination. It was over and on top our leaves, no? But we could, we had a, parang a, a rest day, like a vaccine day that was sent, taken off our leaves. That was, as far as I know, the strong pull for us. And there are a lot, no? I mean, my team and Sir Mike's team, they're all... They also have all these incentivizing schemes that they that they have rolling that they are rolling out now. But I feel the pinaka biggest good na naka change of mind was really the correct information. Yeah, thank you for sharing uh, your the the initiatives no that that increase your vaccine uh, awareness uh, in the organization. Um, you, you talked about um, fear communication uh, earlier, no? And and I think one of the primary, uh, well, uh, based on surveys, no, one of the primary uh, reasons why why vaccine hesitancy is still high right now is really because of um, you know misinformation, and um, how especially that's that's quite rampant in social media. 
So how do we combat this misinformation in social media? Now, especially that we're receiving this uh, forwarded messages every now and then uh, about vaccines changing our DNA and turning us into zombies in the, in the, yes. in, in the future. So how do we combat that? So how we do it, no? Um, that's not. This is the consultative approach. Na we have it with on our phase three. We in fact are now rolling. We have been doing face to face. Um, we call it the IEC still face to face IEC. Wherein after we the doctors still with the doctors we, it, to really combat the wrong information, we use the voice of doctors. So after the doctor would present a 20 minute information, correct information, data, science, et cetera, no? And the heart, let's see, the, our doctors would also give their own personal testimonies. Some of our doctors, you know, they lost, they lost their own parents, right? So all of these very powerful um, information. After that, we have another 20 minutes for a smaller group, you know, for, for them to voice out. So meaning, what am I saying here? We have to have an opportunity really for the Q&A and the, what do you call it, um, open discussion. That has to be available because if we leave it up to the public to just do their own translation, it can really go crazy. You know, we know that. Even us, sometimes we don't know. We do want to check the source. So for us being sources ourselves, no, we do not release anything until DOH 7 says, okay, this is good to go. No, just to really make sure. Align bata. We do our own research. You know, we check our sources. We still pass it on to say we will release it. Anything from a poster to a comics, we have DOH to say approve, no? And then we release it. That's for us. Ikita din, and some of us here who are sources, we have to ensure also we don't put out anything we do not validate. So validate really your facts. It's the most responsible thing to do. The second is being consultative. No, so if you are if only, you know, we would have that chance, if you can do that in your own companies, na, you can invite, say, your doctor, and there would be a chance na dili lang siya one way. It will be a two-way communication. And the people, we did this no, with the Bajau community, um, they are more responsive katung nag smaller group discussions na. Because there are certain fears na, you know, they keep to themselves. And then when it becomes a smaller group, they could ask the doctor. So, uh, yeah, this is one effective to us at least, no? This is another effective way we saw that that has changed mindsets. Because at, at this point, we're not, it is not just the wrong information. Sometimes it's also already now the mindset and or culture and or beliefs, no? And or biases. So now it becomes personal. So if then it becomes consultative, that would address that. Okay, you know, it will now align then and then it will be more, Parang, um, a customized manner of really approaching their own personal fears. Okay, thank you, Ms. Estino, for, for sharing your strategy no, in really fostering this um, consultative um, communications no, with, with our target uh, um, you know, participants. But uh, the, the, the vaccination uh, programs that we have are highly... Um, um, you know, uh, focused in the in the urbanized areas, no. So, how about those in the rural areas, especially those in the mountain barangays? How how can we reach out to to those uh, um, who are there, no, are very far from uh, the city centers? Okay, those were our first in mind, actually, and um, we thought of them very f firstly. Sila gito ang gihinahona. So, what we did, we do. We convened the barangay health workers, the BHWs. So all of those barangays, I think 81, if I am not mistaken, the barangay health workers. Uh, we did a smaller group, no? So it was a series of IEC first for the barangay health workers with the doctors, and then their own consultative, um, you know, um, an open discussion with them. And then the next in the afternoon, so it was a longer session. We did an echo back training. So our team, no, headed by our humanitarian disaster and preparedness team, those especially with a with background in our center for leaders, also no, on training, they were the ones who trained the BHWs to echo back what the doctors said. That way, when they go back to their own barangays, they'd be able to 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 say it again, no, to to retrain 
But what we did though, when they did, when um, they went to their barangays, we still booked the doctors to go with them pa rin for the Q&A. No? For those nga dili good na mo siya matransition nga online. This was a bit complicated because at one point yun, a lockdown happened, etc. So we did a, a full offline manner nga parang not exceeding pilato, not exceeding 15. Um, so one DHW and then our doctor, our team, and then, you know, the constituents of, a, say, Busay, no? our barangay far up. Uh, not within the city. Um, but there were, at the, some point, we had to pivot na parang siguro virtual na lang because nag-lockdown, nagkuan na po ta'ato. There was mobility, res there was restriction. So that's what we did. No? So that's how we reached out to the barangay level. Yeah. What, who we trained first were their barangay health workers. And the barangay health workers then scheduled trainings to the constituents in the barangay with full support as well from Rafi and our partner doctors. We're, we even went all the way to Bohol for this, thanks to our CMA partners as well, the, the group of doctors. UP Mass is very active here, you know, who, who go with us. We went to Olango with UP Mass doctors as well. Wow, thank you for uh, sharing uh, these strategies, no, Ms. Esti, and uh, we're very happy to know that uh, uh, that you have reached out to these areas, no, that, um, that are seldom uh, um, you know, reached uh, by by the ongoing vaccination programs that we have right now, uh, because um, because of the mandates really of focusing it in the um, in the highly urbanized centers. No, um, so vaccine awareness is one thing, but then uh, there 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 is actually still the other side, no, which is the uh, the anti-vaccine uh, sentiments, no. And uh, in fact, uh, outside of uh, uh, um, internationally, it's it's it still remains to be a potent movement, no? And uh, have uh, and have had some um, some siguro mga adherents here in, in 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 the Philippines and even in Cebu, no? So how do we reach out to these anti-vaxxers? We have to be kind. We really, really have to spread kindness. Mm -hmm. It is difficult to, to convince them no, or transform their mindset. And we have to be kind enough to understand where they're coming from. May hugot yan, for sure. No? Um, perhaps they lost somebody after getting, you know, the, the person got vaccinated. They still lost him. Perhaps many things, no? um, a lot of adverse effects from previous histories. So that would be the only way. Um, we have, there's a lot of things now that could divide us. There's, a, I mean, we are absolutely divided. And, you know, uh, I just to share on a personal note, I just visited my mom this week, no, as she turned 80, and I haven't seen her for the past two years. And that's very rare for our family not to be seeing each other. And so the division is not just on mindsets, right? It's physical, it's actual, it's a tangible division. We're divided, we're not together. Um, all of these anti-vaxxers, it's the same. It's a division of, you know, it's, the, it's them and us. It's a division. But we do have to be kind um, to also understand where they're coming from um, instead of perhaps us fighting it. Uh, nothing wins in a war, in war. I mean, I guess we all know that, right? Um, we just increase the division if we do. So for, um, for our communication for that matter in the way we do it. We do try to be inclusive as possible. That's why we also, you know, we, we created this video that's in the language of our um, indigenous people. And we also really respect their culture. You know, uh, if, it, if, if medical science is also something that community is very conservative about, we have to respect that. But we also, it wouldn't, Walang mawawala, kumbaga, no? it, we won't lose anything if we also try to speak their language. And that is something we did. We literally spoke their language. We had somebody within their community create the song, write the song, write the music. All we did was to hire you know, a professional musician to arrange, uh, no, they even arranged it, but to produce it, no? to just make it more, to record it in a more professional studio. But I mean, we were there in their community when they played it just using their natural instruments. Um, so we, you know, we speak their language, we create it 
what they say, no, and the reality, and, and the reality that there are lesser jobs, there's le lesser food in the market, there's um, just less economics going on, no, for everyone. All of this reality, once you know, they also see it. Th that might change their minds, but in their own time, I believe, no, uh, it can't also be when we want it. The only critical point here is, of course. You know the vaccine at one point. Hopefully, it's still there forever, right? But so we don't stop in doing that. But yeah, to answer your question really simply would be let's still be kind. If somebody does not believe the way we believe, let's just be kind and ideally speak their language. When you do so, you'd be better understood. Okay, thank you, uh, Miss Este, no, for sharing with us um, uh, Ramon Aboitis Foundation's um, best practices and your strategies in really, um, you know, uh, promoting uh, vaccination no, in our communities. And we are very thankful to, for all your efforts. Please continue to do that. And, uh, and so on, on, uh, on behalf of uh, PMAP Cebu, uh, we'd like to thank you and we'd like to um, um, give you this uh, e-certificate of appreciation. And, uh, okay. And I, I, I would like to read the certificate of appreciation uh, is hereby given to S.P. Plunkett uh, for her insightful conduct as speaker of the webinar, The Critical Role of Vaccination to Your Family and Community. To the PMAP Cebu members and other participants on July 16, 2021. Signed, Grace S. Iligan, PhD, PMAP Cebu President. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ma'am Esti. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us. My God, uh, it's so humble to know all the things that you've been through for, uh, during this pandemic just to help the community. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, thank, thank you, you so President much, Grace, uh, and also Miss uh, S.T. Plunkett no? from Amboramon Aboitis Foundation. And uh, right now, folks, uh, we will proceed directly with our next speaker. I next know, speaker. you know, you've seen it. Okay. Uh, but before we, but before we uh, get to our next speaker, no, we'd like to invite each and every one of you to the forthcoming PMAP annual conference, and uh, you know it's going to be uh, very, um, a very, very uh, good learning experience for all of us, especially dur during this time. And uh, to know more about it, let's watch this video. I know you know, you've seen it, experienced it, affected by it. Of course, it's hard, but this is an invitation to change it, to bounce back, to feel the inspiration. Masyado ka nang apektado para tumigil pa. Ngayon, oras na para sa mas mataas na antas ng pagbabalik at pagbabago. The hashtag business better than usual. Oo naman, aangat ka, aangat tayo. Buong Luzon, Visayas at Mindanao, kaisa sa pagbangon at pagbabago. The 58th PMAP Annual Conference. Angat, leading people to higher ground. Be the soul of change. Be the driver of encouragement. Be the fuel of moving forward. Angat, leading people to higher ground. The 58 PMAP Annual Conference. Dahil mas personal na ang trabaho ngayon. Okay, folks, so... Now we go to our second speaker for this afternoon. Our speaker is a graduate of the School of Medicine from the University of the East Ramon Magsaysay Memorial Medical Center in 1988. 
She finished combined anatomic clinical pathology at the University of the Philippines, Philippine General Hospital in 1996. She's a fellow of the Philippine Society of Pathologists and a fellow of the Philippine Society of Oncologists. She is a practicing anatomic and clinical pathologist and currently the chief pathologist of the Department of Health, Region 7. Friends, please help me welcome Dr. Mary Jean Lorece. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you again for this privilege. I always call it a privilege when I am invited to give lectures, no? Kasi heto lang naman ang pwede natin gawin to be able to educate everybody on what's going on, uh, especially with this COVID pandemic, and to be able to share the knowledge and expertise so people can be guided. Uh, sabi nga natin is uh, wisdom or knowledge is empowerment. So let me start by sharing the slides that I have for you this afternoon. But before I start um, talking about updates on SARS-CoV-2 variants and vaccines, I want to comment on your the one that you showed a while ago no, about your upcoming event. Napakaganda po yun kasi mahalaga ngayon that we should already be planning moving forward. Sana naman sa inyong pagbabalik negosyo, pagbabalik buhay o pagbabalik natin sa ating pamumuhay, you will also consider whatever the new normal should be, how it should be, including the protocols to include also testing in the workplace. All right. So, tingnan natin yung ating updates. Medyo marami-rami na ang nangyayari sa atin ngayon. Alam ninyo na bago lang, no? Alam naman natin worldwide, they are people are actually observing and taking care about these variants of concern. Pero bago tayo magsalita about a variant of concern kagaya ng lambda at saka delta, pag-usapan natin ano ang basihan nito. So I'll try to be very, very laymanized in my approach so that everybody will have a better understanding of the topic this afternoon. So sinabi natin, ang pinaka-basis ng ating tinatawag na mga variants of concern or variants of interest ay pagka merong mutation. Pag sinabi po natin na mutation, may pagbabago sa anyo ng ating virus ni coronavirus. Po natin na si coronavirus belongs to um, RNA group of viruses. Eh, ito pong RNA na to, napaka stable kasi single-stranded siya. Hindi siya kagaya nung kanyang kapatid na si DNA. Si DNA virus, double-stranded, no? kaya medyo stable siya. But RNA viruses where your coronavirus belongs to, Highly unstable. So any change in temperature, in the pH or acidity or alkalinity of the environment, it will be affected. Now, as there are more people, um, you know, getting sick with coronavirus, then the virus itself will have to undergo some changes. Ang tawag po niyan ay yung kanyang copying mechanism. Doon po yung affectation nito. Ibig lang pong sabihin nito, kunyari, kung sampu tayo sa isang kwarto o 20 tayo sa isang kwarto, isa sa atin nagkaroon ng COVID or coronavirus disease, pag ito ay nailipat natin sa isang kasama natin sa isang silid, hanggang sa makarating doon sa ika 20th person doon sa loob ng kwarto, magkakaroon po ng pagbabago yung anyo ni coronavirus. Hindi na yung kanyang original image, no? Kasi yung kanyang copying mechanism, nagbago din yon. And this is the problem, and this is the one that is actually, you know, the foundation of all of these variants of concern. Now, Another example would be, kung kunyari tayo sa isang classroom, sa nung estudyante pa tayo, 20 tayo sa loob ng isang classroom. Kung ikaw ay nangopia sa iyong classmate number one, kasi siya ay naman yung A student natin, at yung nasa likuran mo ay nangopia din sa iyo, hanggang sa pinakadulo nangopia sa nangopia, mapapansin po natin may pagbabago doon sa ating kinopia. Ganon din po, pag tayo ay nagkukwentuhan, meron tayong ikinwento sa tao na ito. Pagdating doon sa pinakadulo na kanyang kinwentuhan nung kanyang na, na, nasagap na balita, magbabago po yon. So that is what we call a mutation. Ngayon, pagka nagbago na po ito ng anyo, but remember that a mutation is a common occurrence among viruses. That is an adaptive mechanism. Ibig kong sabihin... Um, can we mute uh, those... 
uh, no, sorry, because I get distracted. Thank you. So, pag sinabi po natin, sabi ko nga kanina, na kapag ka nag-mutate ang isang virus, ibig pong sabihin nito, adaptive mechanism para mabuhay siya. Hindi po kasi siya magsusurvive if it will not also adapt to the changing times of the environment where the virus is located. So, this mutation can either be good or bad. Pwede naman na maging mas mahina si virus o pwede namang maging mas virulent or mas malala yung kanyang sakit na dala. So tingnan natin ito. No? So yan naman is a very simple um, uh, diagram that will show you itong original or your call, call, uh, so-called parental strain. So sa una, yung kanyang original na itsura, ganyan pa. Tapos nagkaroon siya ng pagbabago, nagkaroon siya ng mutation. Magbabago naman yung loob ng iyong virus kasi nagbago nga yung kanyang anyo. Hanggang sa yung kanyang bagong anyo ay magiging bagong strain siya. And this new strain or new variant ay magkakaroon din ng impact on how this virus will have to be treated in the environment or in matters of treatment or management of the patients or individuals. Sinabi natin na itong mga variants of concern, marami na po sila ngayon. Nung araw, nung nagsimula yung variant of concern, pinangalanan siya sa pangalan ng bansa kung saan siya nakita. And then napansin na with that naming or nomenclature using the country of origin has created some form of discrimination. So ang ginawa ng WHO, ginawa niya, binago nila at nilagyan na lang ng mga ng mga alphabetical names no so yung sinasabi nating alpha ha? beta gamma yan yung bagong mga pangalan nila let me share with you yung experience natin dito sa Central Visayas nung January February and March nagkaroon tayo ng second surge ang nangyari noon sobrang dami ng kaso natin and so again i decided with my team to be able to do and conduct biosurveillance, aggressive biosurveillance testing. And totoo nga naman, nakita natin na meron tayong tinatawag na variant of concern. No? At heto yung tinatawag nating P.3. So makikita ninyo si P.3 dyan or tinatawag na theta. T-H-E-T-A. Pero una ito, tinawag ng P.3 and then pinangalanin nilang Central Visayas variant. At tayo po ay nagreklamo noon. No? Um, if you were following the news, I was really angry with this because according to I said, tayo lang ang naiiba. Pinangalan sa kanilang bansa, bakit tayo pinangalan sa isang region? Pwede ba na ibig sabihin noon ay ano tayo, Republic of Cebu kasi pinangalan yun ng Central Visayas variant. No? So binago nila, ginawa nilang P.3 at ngayon sa WHO ay theta ang kanyang pangalan. But good news, kasi mga ilang araw nakalipas, ang sabi ng WHO, it is not even a variant of interest. Ang sabi lang sa kanya ay magiging alert siya. Alert siya for further monitoring. Ibig pong sabihin noon, hindi siya nakakatakot na, na mga mutations with potential clinical significance, but rather, pwede siyang bantayan kasi pwede naman na magiging ma-elevate siya, maging variant of concern na naman siya. So ngayon, what is being um, you know, touted or which is naririnig natin palagi ngayon? Delta at saka Lambda variant. Pero siguro, bago natin, heto si Delta, B.1617.2. Heto po yung nagmula sa India. Heto yung Delta variant. Pero pag sinabi mo ng Lambda, heto naman din galing sa Amerika, US of A. No? So yan yung mga tinitingnan ngayon na mga variants of concern. So, heto, pag sinabi natin na variants, tatlo ang bagay na pag-aaralan natin. Meron tayong tinatawag na variant of interest, variant of concern, variant of high consequence. Kailangan maintindihan natin ano ang pagkakaiba nila. Okay. Una, pag sinabi mong... In Tatlo kasi or apat ang titingnan natin paano natin masasabi na either ay VOI siya, VOC, or VHC. Kailangan tingnan kung meron ba itong impact sa kaniyang pagiging highly transmissible. Ibig pong sabihin, meron ba siyang E484K na siya yung dahilan kung bakit mas marami siyang nahahawa? Pwede ba na may anon siyang N501? Kaya siya ay um, tinatawag natin na mas... Um, 
mas grabe siya or highly virulent siya or mas pathogenic. Po pwede ba na meron siya yung iba pang mga mutations na nakita natin na may effect doon sa ating mga bakuna na meron tayo ngayon. O kaya naman, heto bang variant na ito ay nakakaapekto sa mga current forms of treatment and management. At ikalima, eh, pwede pa ba nating ma-detect siya currently with the current diagnostics that we have in place? Okay? So, pag sinabi mo na variant of interest, heto siya ay babantayan kasi nga naman nakikita na siya pero hindi pa tayo sigurado kung talaga na may impact siya on transmission, on virulence, on vaccine efficacy, on the treatment and diagnostic measures. Pero kung meron ng data na nakikita natin na mas marami nga siyang nahahawaan at mas, naka, mas grabe yung sakit na kanyang idinudulot. Ibig sabihin, meron na tayong study population na nakitaan natin na heto yung nangyayari sa kanya. Then that is elevated to become a variant of concern. Now, kung sakali man na yung sa datos natin, makikita na natin na yung ating mga gamot ngayon na binibigay ay hindi na epektibo. O kaya naman hindi na po pwede ang bakuna na ibinibigay natin sa isang tao. O kaya naman eh, hindi na siya makita or madetect at madiagnose sa current diagnostic kits na meron tayo, then it becomes of high consequence. So kung sa grado pa, step 1, step 2, step 3, step 3 being the highest, yan yung variant of high consequence. Si step 1, yung pinakamababa, is variant of interest. Pangalawa, si variant of concern. So sa ngayon, ang meron tayo na sinasabing variant of concern ay ang delta variant at ang lambda variant. At sa matter of fact, let me share with you, yung bagong lumabas ngayon na na data na inirelease kanina ng Philippine Genomic Center, merong labing anim na varia, delta variant na nakita sa Pilipinas. So, sino-sino ito? Labing lima daw ang nagpositibo na na-recover for variant um, for for the delta variant, isa ang patay dito. Sampung babae, 14 to 79 years old, dalawa ang returning overseas Filipinos whose history of travel are from these countries, United Arab Emirates and Qatar. Isa naman ang galing sa United Kingdom. At saka yung iba naman, ang history ay wala pa, hindi pa natin nasasagap saan ba sila galing. Now, dalawa sa NCR, isa sa Region 3, dalawa sa Region 6, anim sa Region 10, lima nito returning overseas Filipinos. So sa ngayon, okay pa tayo. Wala pa tayo dito sa region natin. However, we have sent our samples to the Philippine Genomic Center because again, we see if you are you know, following news that there is a surge of our cases the third time around. I would not call it a wave, but I would call it as a surge of cases. Meaning to say, dumadami yung ating mga kaso, more than what we expected, and we need to be observing kung ano ba talaga meron tayo at bakit dumadami yung ating mga kaso. Alright? So, tingnan natin ang sunod. So, how do var, uh, vaccines work? Understanding ngayon, paano ba ang isang bakuna nagtatrabaho? Kasi syempre, yung ating, uh, alam na natin yung ating mga variants of concern no? at alam na natin na si Delta at si Lambda yung ating binabantayan sa ngayon. Sabi nga nila, si Indonesia sa ngayon is battling the Delta variant. And kung titingnan natin, Marami na silang nabakunahan kesa sa atin dito sa Pilipinas. I will be giving you a data on how many millions of Filipinos has been vaccinated in a short while. Because every day, at least halos every day, Monday to Friday, I try to make the VVOC, the Visayas Vaccine Operations Center, briefer here in Oak Ridge IT Building 3 para naman yung mga tao masundan nila ano nang nangyayari sa ating mga bakuna, ilan pa ang bakunang meron tayo, at anong mga klaseng bakuna meron tayo. So let's look at how the vaccines work. Alam naman natin 
na ang bakuna is considered an antigen or a foreign substance ng ating katawan. So, heto mga bakuna is considered to contain an immunogen, no? Ang ating kasi ano, ang ang hetong isang sakit no, nagdadala ng sakit ay considered na kung sakaling wala ikaw bakuna against sa kanya, kaya ikaw magkakasakit o kaya ikaw ay magkakaroon ng complications from the disease. So you have a higher risk of developing the the disease dahil yung immune system mo hindi siya trained to fight off that particular um, microorganism or virus. So yan yung trabaho ng ating bakuna. The natural response of vaccines or to illness would be, kung titingnan ninyo dyan sa inyong mga monitors, meron na tayong mga sakit na may mga bakuna na, kagaya ng measles, kagaya ng ating um, polio, kagaya ng hepatitis, ng chicken pox, yellow fever. Marami na po tayong mga infectious diseases na may mga bakuna na sila. Pero ang ating um, COVID-19, dahil bago pa ito, kailangan niya ng bakuna na i-develop para din matrain yung ating immune system at malabanan si COVID-19 or si coronavirus kapag tayo ay na-expose sa kanya. So, meron tayong dalawang pag-uusapan din dito, yung tinatawag nating efficacy at effectiveness. Kasi minsan natatakot tayo, sabihin natin na ang ah, mababa naman masyado yung efficacy ng isang bakuna na ito, dito lang ako sa mas mataas. Ang masasabi ko po ay heto. Pag sinabi nating efficacy, ibig pong sabihin ang pagbaba ng numero ng mga magkakaroon ng sakit pag ikaw ay binigyan ng bakuna. But then, this is in a controlled environment. Ibig pong sabihin, dalawang subsets of population, isa yung binigyan ng totoong bakuna at yung isa naman ay placebo lang or yung walang laman o kaya tubig lang ang itinurok sa kanya at na-expose sila ngayon kay coronavirus so hindi, mo, uh, hindi niya alam na siya pa ay hindi bakuna yung kanyang tinanggap. Iko-compute natin ngayon ilang percentage ba ang effective yung bakuna na ibinigay doon sa isang tao na na-expose kay coronavirus. That is in a controlled environment. So wala tayong pagbabago sa ating mga surroundings na yan. Pero pag sinabi natin effectiveness, ibig sabihin nito, ibinigay natin ng bakuna kagaya sa ating ginagawa ngayon, iba-ibang edad, iba-iba ang level ng ating immune response, ibang-iba ang level ng ating exposure kay coronavirus. At heto ngayon, madidetermine natin kung totoo ba na tayo, pag binigyan tayo nitong bakuna na ito, pagkatapos ng mga ilang buwan o ilang taon, ay mababalik at matitingnan sa studies natin, ilan ba talaga ang naging okay na nung na-expose kay coronavirus, ilan lang ang nag-develop ng mild uh, symptoms, ilan lang ba ang naggrabe at ilan lang ba ang asymptomatic. So yan yung tinatawag nating effectiveness. So far, sa lahat ng mga bakuna na meron tayong emergency use authorization, tandaan po natin, wala pa tayong FDA-approved na bakuna. Lahat po is operating under emergency use authorization. Ano ang pagkakaiba nitong dalawang ito? Una, kung meron na pong FDA approval, ibig pong sabihin tapos na ang kanilang clinical trials kasama ang post-clinical marketing trial. Ibig pong sabihin noon, mula sa phase 1, phase 2, hanggang phase 3 at saka doon sa panghuli na nung ibigay na yung bakuna sa mga tao ay nagkaroon sila ng studies na naman na datos na sasabihin na heto yung mga nangyari sa binigyan namin ng bakuna. So, when they have that and it is already it will pass, you know, all the requirements that the FDA and the vaccine experts panel are going to go through one by one, then they're given an FDA approval. That means that they will have a certificate of product registration. Once a product, a medicine or a vaccine has a CPR, then the manufacturer and the distributor can now sell their products. Pwede nang ibenta, pwede na sila ngayong mag-marketing. Sa ngayon, dahil EUA lang, ibig sabihin, wala ang certificate of product registration, illegal at matitechnical po sila kung sila ay magmamarket at magbibenta ng kanilang mga bakuna. Kaya sa pagka ngayon, there is only a tripartite agreement whereby 
an LGU or a private company can attach to the national government in an agreement with the supplier. Yan yung tinatawag na tripartite agreement. Sa pagka ngayon po, meron na po tayo ilang bakuna ang pumasok sa Pilipinas. Una, meron tayong tinatawag na Sinovac, meron tayong AstraZeneca, Gamaleya, Pfizer, meron din po tayong uh, Johnson and Johnson na parating at meron din tayo yung tinatawag na Moderna na meron ng EUA. Sinopharm also has the EUA and the eighth one is Barat BioNTech. So sila po yung meron tayong tinatawag na emergency use authorization. Isa pa na dapat nating tandaan, bakit yung emergency use authorization? Kasi po, pag may nangyari sa iyo at meron ikaw adverse event na nangyari sa iyo, it is the government that should shoulder the expense. Kasi nga, and it is the government that will now run after the manufacturer or supplier. So hindi po pwede na tayo diretso no, magre-reklamo at tayo sabi natin, idimanda natin si manufacturer ng, ng isang bakuna na to dahil may nangyari sa atin. Kasi wala nga po yung FDA approval at EUA lang ang meron siya. So let's look at this. Heto, I want to discuss more on this. Kasi heto minsan yung ating sinasabi na um, bakit ako may parang ano bang ginagawa ng bakuna sa katawan ko? Pag sinabi po nating immunogenicity, ang ibig lang pong sabihin nito ay ang abilidad or the ability of a vaccine to elicit a measurable immune response. Bawat isa po sa atin is created differently. Each one of us has different types of immune responses to a given exposure to an offending microorganism. Pag sinabi kong offending microorganism or a virus, lahat tayo, kung mapapansin natin, kunyari si flu, na-expose ikaw kay flu, dahil season ngayon ni flu, by the way. So, dahil ako ay walang bakuna at na-expose ako, pero I am a very healthy person kasi I exercise, my diet is very good, I follow my diet very strictly. I don't eat so much of sweets. Remember that sugar can actually be, uh, you know, um, it can create more oxygen um, radicals, um, you know, uh, antioxygen uh, radicals. No, So we also know that sugar is bad for our system. So it can uh, put down our immune defense. No, So ngayon, na-expose ako, but my immune response is trained in such a manner that I can fight off the flu virus that I am exposed to. So in all probability, I will not be you know, too sick not to be able to go to work. O kaya naman, if I get absent kasi I am sick, it will only take me one or two days and I am up and about again. So that is immunogenicity. That is reaction of your body when you are exposed to an offending microorganism or a virus. The vaccine works like that. So when we are given vaccines, our bodies react to it differently. So there are those that will really have a very strong immune response elicited after being vaccinated. And how do we measure this? Right now, although sinasabi nila na hindi pa talaga siya, you know, the standard test methodology that we use, but me kasi, being a pathologist practicing for all this almost 30 years, I know that when you measure your antibodies, then you would be able to see more or less how your body has reacted to the vaccine, okay? Now, there are two types of cells in our immune system. We have the T cells and the B cells. The B cells are actually responsible for the developing or production of antibodies. Antibodies are the molecules or proteins that will fight off the, the offending pathogen. No? Kunyari, it's coronavirus kasi COVID-19 na bakuna ibinigay sa'yo. But the T cells are memory cells. Ibig pong sabihin niyan, dahil binigyan ka nung bakuna na yan at na-induce niya ang iyong katawan na mag-develop ng antibodies, kahit na ilang buwan ang makalipas, ikaw ay na-expose kay coronavirus, matatandaan ng iyong T-cells, ng memory cells mo, na heto pala ay ano, nakapitan na ako nito o kaya naman may bakuna na ako pa. So I have to mount my immune response to fight off the offending virus. So yan yung tinatawag nating immunogenicity. 
may pangalawang term tayo na dapat tandaan sa hapon na ito. Heto ang tinatawag nating reactogenicity. Ibig sabihin nito ay heto yung mga subset of reactions that can occur after you have received your vaccine. Meaning to say, these are the manifestations of your body when you are given the vaccine. Because ideally, these are foreign substances, the vaccines. So pag tinurok sa iyo yan, of course, yung iyong skin na pinagdaanan niya ay makakaramdam talaga ng sakit. So that is a reaction to an offensive again and that is your your syringes or your needles that pass through your system. It can also induce fever, ha? chills, nausea, vomiting. Lahat yan kasi are reactogenic reactions because your body the med chemical mediators are actually um, uh, you know um, elicited from the vaccines no that are given to you there are inflammatory markers in our body like for example you develop fever because you have your interleukins that are being uh, released o kaya naman pain because of the prostaglandins that are given uh, the interferons that are also released because of the vaccine that is given to you so these reactions are actually natural reactions of a person who is given something that is a foreign substance from outside, okay, na ibinigay sa'yo. So that is a normal occurrence. However, based on our reports on the number of vaccinated persons and those that developed adverse events, mapapansin po natin, kokonti lang po yan. Let me go over my, my briefer this um, afternoon. Let me look for that slide. Let me share with you because I have it here for a while. Sandali lang. Ha? Let me look for it because it's a very good one that I want to share with you to show you that you do not really have to worry about these reactions that you may be having. Now, the reactions are of two types. I cannot find it. So let me go back to my notes. There are two types of adverse events that you have to take note of. Okay, so where is it? I'm sorry, I cannot find it. But anyways, there are two types of adverse events that you are going to take care of. We have the minor and we also have the serious adverse event. Pag sinabi natin minor serious adverse events, heto yung mga nararamdaman natin na sakit ng ulo, pagkahilo, pagsakit ng ating blood pressure or pagbaba ng blood pressure o kaya naman heto yung pagsusuka o kaya naman heto yung tipong o oh, um, umaakyat yung 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 ano yung pulse rate or your heart rate o kaya meron namang mga instances na bababa yung blood pressure o kaya naman there's fever and there's chills no so these are actually minor adverse events meron tayong tinatawag na serious adverse events heto yung life threatening meaning to say na severe allergic reaction or anaphylactic reaction. And when this happens, what are the things you need to watch out for? Heto yung hirap kang huminga. O kaya naman naninikip yung dibdib mo. O kaya naman kailangan kang isugod sa ospital kasi nagdevelop ikaw ng mga rashes all over your body na halos hindi ka makahinga. That will require giving you oxygenation or oxygen therapy that will require you to be given epinephrine, that's a medicine, or that will require you to be hospitalized. So this is a serious adverse event. And the end spectrum of that would be if you die from it. But so far, let me be honest with you. Sa lahat ng ating mga nabakunahan na 532,176, Dito lang po sa atin sa Metro Cebu, no? 532,176. Ang atin pong serious adverse events na nakatala is 11. So if it's 11 over 532,176, that's 0.000% no? of the total that were given the vaccine. Now, Based on our analysis, because I also sit in the Regional Adverse Events Following Immunization Committee, where there are a panel of specialists that go over 
the that will go over all these um all, all of these um serious adverse events. Napansin ko heto number one, hindi po naging honest yung binakunahan sa kaniyang medical condition. Meron po akong apat or lima dito na merong palang hika pero hindi naman sinabi may hika sila. So nung inexamine sila pre-vaccination monitoring o kaya screening nila, hindi din nila dinivulge yung kanilang condition na meron sila. Pag uwi ng bahay, ay hinika pala, nagkaroon ng paghihirap ng paghinga. At hindi nila ni-report ito sa kanilang vaccination sites. Ibig sabihin, hindi naman manan. Bumalik ngayon doon sa vaccination site for the second dose. Siyempre, pagbigay ng second dose, pag-uwi dahil hindi naman siya nagsabi, hindi naman sila nag-reveal ng kanilang mga sakit. Pag-uwi ng bahay, nahirapan ng huminga, dinala ng ospital. Now, meron naman din tayong nabakunahan na mga healthcare, mga frontliners pa man din, na alam naman na mataas ang blood pressure. At nung binigyan ng bakuna, ay medyo sikip ang paghinga. Eh, pumunta pa rin sa party, nakipag-inuman, nakipag-fiesta pa din. So ano ang ini-expect natin? Di po ba? O kaya naman, meron naman tayong mga kasamahan na meron naman palang history of bypass sa kanilang mga puso at nagbigyan ng bakuna, pero naglaro pa rin sa araw, sa init ng araw. So nag-heat stroke tayo. So what I'm trying to drive at is, we have all these 11 serious adverse events cases, but there is no direct causality. There is no way na pwede nating sabihin na kaya po siya ay nagkaroon ng serious na adverse event ay dahil po sa bakuna. So ang aking pakiusap sa ating lahat ngayon who are here listening to my lecture would be, number one, be honest condition. Be sensitive to what your body is telling you. So after a vaccination, if you feel something off, then you need to seek consultation. Pangatlo po, kailangan po ay doon naman sa vaccination sites, lagi kong sinasabi sa kanila yan na kailangan maging mapagmanman sa kanilang mga medical screening para sigurado na yung bakuna bago maibigay at nung ibigay natin ay na-monitor natin ang bawat isa. So once we are able to do this, then we would be able to avoid these serious adverse events. Okay? So next, Puntahan natin, ano ba talaga ang goal at target natin para bakit tayo nagmamadaling magbakuna sa ngayon? Because we are going to try to achieve a herd immunity. Ibig pong sabihin nito, marami tayong mababakunahan para yung mga tao na bakunahan, we will be able to protect them from getting sick. Kasi syempre kung tayo ay bakunado, sigurado tayo na yung hindi na bakunahan ay hindi natin madadalhan ng sakit. So in principle, we are protecting them because we are protected already. There are two ways of getting a herd immunity. One, expose everybody to coronavirus, meaning to say natural infection. Or secondly, through immunization. Pag through natural infection, marami po tayong patay niyan because the vulnerators will not be able you know, to survive the onslaught of this coronavirus pandemic. But if it is through vaccination, that means we are going to be sure that we are going to protect our vulnerable sector. Our goal is 70 to 85% of the total eligible population to be vaccinated. Is this going to happen to the Philippines? The national government has assured us that they will provide for 70% or 70 million Filipinos the vaccines for free. Two doses, if it is for two doses, single dose for a single dose vaccine. And currently, we are ready giving this right now. So, I think I have discussed emergency use authorization. So let's look at the vaccines. All right. So alam naman natin that vaccine development goes through different phases. I think I already explained this to you partially. There is a phase one, phase two, phase three, and of course, there's a phase four. Ang mahalaga lang dito, there are studies that are conducted by these experts, by these developers, you know, trying to see 
by having these volunteers, subsets of populations given the vaccines, how their bodies respond to it, how their immune responses are actually developed against COVID-19. Now, we have a lot of vaccines available already. But let's just look at the vaccines that are currently with us in the Philippines. Okay, so I think that one. So currently, we have Sinovac. Sinovac and Sinopharm use the technology of inactivated virus. Ibig sabihin, pinatay si virus. There is no way it can cause a disease kasi patay na si coronavirus na ginamit nila para maging bakuna siya. Okay? And Sinovac and Sinopharm will require two doses. Ah, so tandaan natin, two doses yan siya at 28 days apart. And it is not very difficult to have Sinovac or Sinopharm because the temperature required for it in its storage is 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. Yung ating mga nakasanayan na bakuna, kagaya ng flu virus, kagaya ng measles, ng polio, ng rabies, inactivated virus. So kung baga makaluma siya na teknolohiya. Pangatlo natin na bakuna ay ang tinatawag nating AstraZeneca, pang-apat si Gamaleya, pang-lima si Johnson and Johnson. Pareho silang tatlo na viral, non-replicating viral vector. Ibig sabihin, gumamit sila ng pinsan ni coronavirus, which is your adenovirus, as a carrier for the spike protein. Okay? So, ginamit nila yung kahawig or kahalintulad ni coronavirus na ang tawag sa kanya ay adenovirus. Si Gamaleya or Sputnik na sinasabi natin ay two doses. 21 days apart. Pero kailangan niya i-ref or i-store siya at minus 18 degrees centigrade. Hindi siya kagaya ng iyong AstraZeneca at ng iyong Johnson & Johnson na pwede lang sila sa ating 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. Si Johnson & Johnson, single dose. Okay, so um, we're waiting for Doctora to uh, to have her connection restored, no? So um, I hope that you are uh, learning so much more about the uh, new variants, variants. And if you have any questions, please uh, type them in the Q and A box. Okay, so um, is Doctora back? Where, where was I? Um, I think I, I was with uh, AstraZeneca, right? So, so AstraZeneca, I said, you know, is also two doses. That would be um, for eight, okay, four weeks to 12 weeks interval. So, yan yung kanya, no? And um, of course, sinabi natin, si Pfizer at Moderna, pareho ang kanilang platform, which is your messenger RNA. And this is the one that is the newest technology that we have. Because you know, these um, viral non-replicating vectors, ginagamit na rin natin yan sa iba nating mga bakuna. But the messenger RNA is the most recent addition in terms of technologies in the preparation of vaccines. Ang ikinaganda ng messenger RNA is pwede kang mag-produce ng sobrang dami at a very short period in time. So si Pfizer, sabi ko, kumpara kay Moderna, will require minus 70 to minus 80 degrees centigrade. At kailangan na siya, pag hinalo mo na siya at inilagay mo sa room temperature, kailangan sa loob ng anim na oras ay maibigay mo na sa iyong mga babakunahan. And for, for Moderna, Moderna can be at 
2 to 8 degrees centigrade. Or yeah, pwede siya 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. One month ang stability niya. Pag binuksan mo at inilagay mo sa room, room temperature, 12 hours, pwede pa siya. Again, si Moderna is 28 days apart. Okay? So the same with your Pfizer is 21 days. Moderna is 28 days. The last one that I want to discuss is Johnson & Johnson. Johnson & Johnson or Janssen has the same platform, as I said, with your Gamalea and AstraZeneca. But the beauty of Johnson & Johnson is this. It is a single dose vaccine. So this is very ideal for people who will be difficult to do a follow up on. And uh, currently we have arriving today, I think uh, today is the 16th, Johnson & Johnson doses that will be given for our A2 subgroup population. That is our senior citizens para po isang tusok na lang si Lolo at si Lola at hindi na tayo mag problema for compliance of the second dose. So, meron tayong mga parating si Barat BioNTech which is actually the same inactivated virus also and it will be um, again 20, um, 28 days interval and another one coming very soon that would be your protein subunit meaning to say only a portion of the protein of coronavirus is used for it to become a vaccine that will have a 21 day interval and that would be your Novavax. Okay, so these are our vaccines. Now, there are two things also that I want to share with you. There is a difference between a procured vaccine and a COVAX facility donation. Kasi sa ngayon, eh, ang gobyerno ang nagbibigay sa atin. Although we have been receiving already vaccines for the private sectors that were procured, no? including those from the LGUs. As a matter of fact, today arrived um, 1.1 million doses of AstraZeneca procured by the LGU and the private sector. So that will be distributed to them kasi binili nila yan eh, through the tripartite agreement. So ito yung pagkakaiba. Kapag ka ang bakuna galing sa gobyerno at heto ay binili ng government, pwede natin siyang ibigay sa subgroups A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. Pero kapag ka ang bakuna ay ibinigay o donasyon ng COVAX facility, which is from the WHO, that means we have to follow kung kanino lang siya dapat ibigay ang bakuna. So pag sinabi ni COVAX facility na ang bakuna na ito ay for A1, A2, A3 at A5 lang dapat doon natin ibigay para hindi masira yung ating tinatawag na kanilang commitment to give us the vaccines. Now, anong ibig sabihin nito? Ibig lang pong sabihin ng A1, these are the medical frontliners. Kasama na po dito yung mga kasambahay nila kasama na po yung mga anak nila na hindi nagbibilong sa ibang mga subgroup classifications, kasama yung drivers, yung hardinero, si Yaya, na kasama nila sa loob ng bahay, o kaya naman yung mga kamag-anak na kasama ng inuuwian ng isang medical frontliner. That's A1. Kasi mahalaga yun to give confidence to the frontliner na siya ay hindi matakot na pag siya ay umuwi, kahit bakunado siya, na yung kanyang kasama sa bahay na posible nagkaroon ng sakit. No? Kasi sa kanyang paglabas, paggrocery niya, nakuha niya si coronavirus, ay maiwi niya sa bahay. So that is to give the confidence and the assurance to the medical frontliners that their families and family members are well taken care of by the government. Pag sinabi natin A2, these are our senior citizens. Pag sinabi natin A3, ito yung mga persons with comorbidities, kasama itong mga taong may mga sakit. Kunyari, meron ikaw ang HIV, meron ikaw ang autoimmune disease like SLE or lupus or kaya psoriasis, meron ikaw ang tinatawag na chronic kidney disease, ikaw ay nag-undergo ng dialysis, ikaw ay bedridden, o kaya naman ikaw ay, ay merong bronchial asthma, meron ikaw COPD, meron ikaw diabetes, may hypertension, at kung ikaw ay merong ikaw obesity. Obesity is part of the A3, persons with comorbidities. Okay? Pag sinabi natin A4, 
Dito ngayon papasok ang ibang economic frontliners, mga vendors natin. Heto sa ating MEPS na mga trabahante natin. Heto ang ating mga drivers sa mga tricycad. Heto yung mga nagbibenta, nagtitinda dyan sa palengke. Heto yung mga nasa BPOs natin. Heto yung mga nasa hotel industries, sa mga resorts. These are our economic frontliners, including those militaries or uh, armed personnel natin. No? Na sila din ang nag-aano sa ating mga peace and order. Pag sinabi natin A5, andun yung ating indigent population. So sila-sila yung dapat tinitingnan natin every time tayo no, gumagawa ng allocation sa ating mga bakuna, we take into consideration the instructions on sino na subgroups ang pwedeng bigyan nito because we have to follow that. So let's look at the next slide. Um, yeah, Can I have the next slide? Mm -hmm. Can I have the next slide? I think um, hindi ako makashare ng screen. All right. So let's look at the effects of vaccination. So sabi ko nga, mahalaga ito maintindihan natin na ikaw, pag ikaw ay binakunahan, pwede ka pa bang magkaroon ng COVID-19? Ang sagot ko po, yes. Kung ikaw po ba ay nabakunahan, at ikaw ay nagkaroon ng COVID-19, pwede ka ba bang makapanghawa ang sagot ko dyan ay yes. So, ano lang pala ang ginagawa ng bakuna sa katawan natin? Pwede tayo, it prevents us from developing a severe disease. Ibig sabihin, there is that assurance that if I am fully vaccinated, if I still contract the virus, I will not end up in the intensive care unit or I will not go six feet below the ground. Yun lang naman ang ibig sabihin niyan. Pangalawa, kung ako ay magkakaroon pa ng COVID at ako ay bakunado, pwede na asymptomatic na lang ako or kung ako ay magdi-develop ng symptoms, maliit na lang or mild case na lang siya. Pero there is no assurance as I said that you cannot transmit the virus when you have it. That's the rationally why. Okay, um, let me go to that. That's the rationale why I said that in our pandemic response, we call the Swiss cheese respiratory virus pandemic defense. Lahat po ng ating mga, mga protocols ngayon, may butas yan. Hindi siya perfect by its own. But when you are going to do all of this together, then you know that you are able to protect yourself and your loved ones. So we continue on with our face masks wearing with our physical distancing, hand washing natin. Hetong ating tinatawag na testing, kailangan pa rin talaga ang surveillance monitoring testing, ang ating pag-a-isolate at pagko-quarantine kung tayo ay positibo at kailangan pa rin natin, ha? Kailangan pa rin natin ang ating mga bakuna. So when you have all of this together, you know that in a community security model, when we do all of this, then we know that we can beat this pandemic, whatever, whatever variant of concern may be here. Okay, so I think that's my last slide. And I hope na, okay, so how many, um, how many have we vaccinated? All right, so you know that nationally, we have already given 10,177,126 doses, no, as first dose for the national figure. 14.54% coverage ratio and 4,288,660 or an equivalent of 6.13% coverage ratio fully vaccinated Filipinos. A total of 14,465,786 doses already given out to our countrymen. Okay, so I think we're doing great with our, with our vaccines and we hope that everybody will have their time for the vaccine and do not do not be afraid to become vaccinated so thank you everyone thank you dr jean loreche no for that very um informative session and 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 uh, we really got a lot of uh, uh, insights no and uh, information about the variants that uh, that we have right now, no, and um, 
We have several questions, uh, Dr. Lorece, you know, and uh, I'd like to ask uh, the first few questions. All right. Okay, so um, our first question, which is uh, from Edison Compuesto. When can we expect these mutations of COVID-19 variants of concern to stop or end? Uh, maybe <laughs> even when people are all vaccinated, the mutations will continue. And why this COVID-19 virus is different from MERS-CoV and SARS-CoV viruses in regard to mutations and spread? Um, let's first answer the first um, pabaliktad tayo. Unahin natin si MERS-CoV, si SARS-CoV. Bakit sila hindi nagkaroon ng mga mutations? Primarily because the pandemic, although um, I, I would say na there was full control no, when they started. It was very short-lived. So yun yung masasabi natin. Because remember that the more infection, the more transmissions there are, then there will be more um, mutations with potential clinical significance. Then there will be more variants of concern that will come out. So yan yung pagiging, palagi nating tandaan. As to whether it will end, no, it will not end. First, COVID is here to stay with us. There will come a time though when we have already achieved our 70% population um, vaccinated, then we are looking forward to it becoming an endemic. Ibig sabihin, kasama na natin siya, hindi na siya pandemic, kundi endemic na siya. Tagaya na siya ng flu virus natin. Remember flu? Wherein it becomes seasonal, nasanay na tayo na nandyan si flu year in, year out, and we have our flu shots, our booster doses every year. So we are looking forward na maging ganyan din si coronavirus. But as of now, I cannot say that um, it will end. Neither will I say that it will stop from mutating and developing into other variants of concern. The only way we can stop it would be the mutations and the variants of concern from developing would be to halt the transmission, control the number of cases. So yan, pangalawa, magpabakuna tayo. Thank you, Dr. Loret Lorette no? So uh, again, uh, friends, uh, it's very clear, no? Uh, COVID is here to stay. So we will have to live with that. Um, then, uh, Dr. Jean, uh, the next question is, is it true and correct that when you feel something uneasy uh, to your body after receiving vaccination, like you feel body pain and fever, uh, that the vaccine that the vaccine is effective uh, is being effective. How about if you totally feel nothing after the vaccination? Is it that's still a, effective? That's a very good question, ha. Huh? Um, okay, diba? Let me put it in the in the in the premise that when I said our immune systems and our immune responses vary from person to person. Okay, so meaning to say, if a person's immune response is such that you develop this um, adverse events, no, yung mga sinabi natin kanina, that your immune system is responding to the vaccine, that's correct. But if you do not feel anything like me when I was given my vaccines, it doesn't mean it's not effective at all. It may be because my body is also made in such a manner that I would have that kind of reaction only. Remember that when I have my flu shots, I don't feel anything also. But when I had my pneumococcal vaccine, my God, for one week, I wouldn't want to even go to my clinic or to the laboratories because I just felt achy all over me. And I felt like I'm sick all the time. Okay, then that happened for a week. And then but after that, I felt good already. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Jean, no, for uh, that, uh, um, for clarifying that. Then uh, our, our question is actually, um, you know, in, in the previous session a while ago, uh, they were asking if, um, is it already okay to mix different brands of vaccine? Like, for example, uh, the first dose was uh, Pfizer, and then the second dose would be AstraZeneca. The answer is no. Right now, there are no studies, no guidance from our experts on vaccines to allow us to do mixing of vaccines. Ang sabi nga eh, 
hindi nga kahit na parehong plataforma, hindi po pwedeng pagsamahin sila. Meaning to say, you get AstraZeneca now and then you're getting Gamalea later, no, a second dose. No, it doesn't work like that. Until such time that studies will come out that will say that it is safe and that it can be as effective as when you have the same brand or same technology over that of a mixed vaccine. So the answer is no. Second, what if you miss your first dose you're supposed to have it on the 21st day and yet you miss it out. Will you be still given the second dose and will it still be effective? The answer to both questions is yes. You can miss your second dose by at least three months and still you can be given your second dose as a, as a second dose to the first dose that you have been given at the very beginning. Okay, thank you for again uh, um, addressing that, uh, Doctor G. No, because uh, that's actually one of a common uh, one of the common questions that we receive. And then um, there are also uh, there are actually also a lot of uh, um, myths, no, uh, surrounding the, the the Delta variant right now. And uh, we'd like to uh, uh, address this now now, no, with you. Um, the first is um, the vaccine does not work with the new Delta variant. That's incorrect. Right now, our vaccines are still very capable. The vaccines that we have is actually very capable still to be able to address our original SARS-CoV-2 as well as the other variants of concern. However, it may be diminished in terms of its effectiveness. So kung dati ay 95%, baka bumaba siya to 80%. Kaya mahalaga, this is always my messaging that we need to be vaccinated now before these variants of concern even be here with us. Number two, our community responses will always matter. Meaning to say, putting in place our minimum public health standards, our contact tracing, our isolation, our testing, lahat po yan dapat naka, naka, naka han ay na ba? In, including also our temporary treatment monitoring facilities, all that our doctors will be needing, this has to be prepared in advance. Now, the next question related to that would be, are we going to have booster doses? Uh, right now, no. We do not have studies that will tell us that a booster dose is imminent or should be given. What we need to understand is let's have our completed doses. You become a fully vaccinated person if you finish the two doses or if you have the single shot like for Johnson & Johnson. And then we'll wait for it until such time that we are given the go signal. But I don't see that happening in the next six to nine months because primarily, again, supply issues. Mahalaga siguro mabigyan muna lahat bago tayo magsabi na kailangan ng booster dose yung iba. Ibigay muna natin bago tayo magsabi ng booster doses. And the immunity, how long does it last? Protection, I would say basic immunology tells us six to nine months you should be protected. Thank you, Dr. Jean, no, for, for that. Um, we have here another... A uh, question from uh, an anonymous attendee. As a company, we have tried our very best to encourage our employees to be vaccinated. Um, we even gave several incentives who sign up to be to those who sign up to be vaccinated and to those who are already vaccinated. But it seems the brand of vaccine to be given to them is a big deal uh, for their decision. What are your thoughts on this? Isa lang ang pwede kong sabihin yan, Ian, no? Kayong mga nandito ngayon at nakikinig sa lecture ko, the safest vaccine that you can have is the vaccine currently available. Hindi tayo dapat mamili kasi pag namili tayo at naghintay tayo ng ating brand na gusto at ikaw ay nahawa, God forbids, that you have it, you, you contract the disease, and then you become severe, all right? Then you spend more amount of money economics in the intensive care unit. Good if you get out of the disease, but what if not? Diba? Why take the chance? Vaccines are all safe and effective. It doesn't matter the brand or which companies prepared it. Otherwise, if they are not, then they would not have been released to us and given the EUA. 
Okay. Thank you, talk, thank you, Dr. Jean. Um, there's also um, a, a latest uh, pronouncement, no, Dr. Jean, uh, from uh, Pfizer BioNTech that uh, they're 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 already preparing for uh, a third dose, no. So, um, what is uh, the position of the Department of Health on this? Right now, we don't. We don't even you know, discuss booster doses. As I said a while ago, let us vaccinate everybody first. Why would you be thinking about a booster dose when in fact we are only, how many percent pa lang yung ating nabakunahan sa Pilipinas? Huh? We're only, our coverage ratio is only at 14.54% for the first dose. And the second dose is only 6.13%. And remember, there is still that 12 to 17 years old na kailangan pa nating paghandaan ng mga kabataan natin na dapat mabakunahan din. So do not worry. Sometimes we also think differently. We have to think outside the box. If you're thinking of a booster dose right now, because this is what the manufacturers, the, the, the developers of the vaccines are saying, we have to start thinking, is it because when you are going to have your booster dose and it's not the government anymore that's going to spend for it and you're going to buy it for yourself, isn't it economics as well? And secondly, it, it's going to be, you know, um, hindi siya makatarungan kasi magbibigay ka na ng booster na marami pang tao dito sa mundo natin, wala pa nga kahit single dose. So please do not even entertain that idea. Which brings me to the next issue, which is very common. Na merong mga guidances accordingly ang US of A and Europe na kung ang iyong bakuna or even Middle East na kung yung iyong bakuna ay hindi galing ng Amerika or ng Europe at hindi Pfizer, hindi uh, Moderna, o kaya hindi AstraZeneca nagawa ng United Kingdom, ay ikaw ay hindi papapasukin sa kanilang bansa. Whilst it is true right now that they have the right to refuse, that's why our OFWs, our seafarers, we give them Pfizer and Moderna, it's because of that. But once the WHO will also enter the picture and give you know, the listing of all the EUA-approved vaccines, then a country should not discriminate the type of vaccine that is given to this particular country. So darating din tayo niyan. So wag tayong matakot. By the time na kailangan mong umalis, hindi ka pa naman pwedeng umalis ngayon, di ba? Pandemic pa naman. By the time na pwede ka nang umalis, the vaccine that you have had will be honored already. Okay. Okay, thank you, thank you, Doc. No, um, in relation to uh, the the you mentioned that they are preparing for the twelve to seventeen years old. No, um, is it true, Doc, that uh, young young people are actually uh, at less at a lesser risk? No, from uh, contracting uh, the virus. No, that's incorrect. Right now, we see young people getting COVID. We have pediatric patients now contracting COVID. So there's no truth to that. Hindi sila immune. Wala silang protection against coronavirus. As a matter of fact, what is more fearsome right now is because it's the season for other diseases. Dengue, typhoid fever, leptospirosis, flu. Yan po sila lahat ngayon, meron na tayo. And COVID can be a rider for this. So is, if a child or a pediatric or an adolescent gets dengue, hindi din malayo na kung siya ay mahawaan ng COVID, ay magkaka-COVID din siya. Pero wala pa tayo sa listing for giving the vaccine to the 12 to 17 for budgetary constraints. At saka yung kinumpute kasi ng government in allocating the vaccines no, para ma-achieve natin yung 70% ay pwede pa sa atin pa 18 and above. So wala pa tayo doon sa 12 to 17. Okay, thank you, Doc. No, Thank you for uh, clarifying that. Um, Can I have the two last questions, please? Yeah, yeah sure, sure, Doc. Um, uh, this is still uh, about some myths no, concerning about the, the Delta variant. Um, 
I I am sure that you mentioned it uh, a while ago, no. But uh, just to be clear, Doc, uh, um, what is the truth that uh, the vaccine is causing uh, has caused the uh, the mutations, no, and uh, including the Delta variant? No, it's not true. Also, remember, vaccines are actually substances when given to the body does not cause a disease. Rather, it is the opposite. It prevents it no? because it, it stimulates your body to produce antibodies against coronavirus. No, it cannot be that the vaccines cause the Delta variant. The Delta variant happened because of uncontrolled transmission. So because there is so much transmission, so many number of cases, and it is passed on from many, many people, then the virus has to be able to have that problems with the copying mechanisms. Okay, thank you for clarifying that, Doc. No, because there are a lot of misinformation uh, roaming around, no, uh, the social media. Uh, my last yes. question, Doc. Um, what is the Department of Health doing, no, in 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 fighting all this misinformation? Every now and then, we receive um, 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 messages in our me in our messenger, no. Uh, are we penalizing this uh, this rumor mongers? No. So, uh, what are we doing to, to to address this? That's the sad part, no, of the story. So I do not know. I do not have an answer to that. But what I can say is very simple: that we, especially in the Department of Health, I believe our communications team, our people in charge, are also doing their share of the job by giving the you know the correct information by doing their town hall meetings and also posting in social media whatever updates there are on the vaccines and my accepting you know um, lectures like this is actually a personal advocacy of mine not for the department of health but my personal advocacy to be able to really help people understand what these vaccines these variants and what we can do actually to be able to live with COVID. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Jean Lorece, no? and uh, thank you so much for sharing this, your time and expertise with us. And, uh, and uh, we hope that everyone will uh, also um, have this advocacy, you know, the same with you. And uh, as, uh, as a token of our appreciation, we'd like to um, give you this e-certificate and allow me to read the e-certificate. Um, the certificate of appreciation and and uh, but before that, may I request uh, Ma'am uh, Grace, President Grace Iligan, to um, turn on your video. So, this certificate of appreciation is hereby given to uh, Dr. Mary Jean Lorece um, for her insightful conduct uh, as speaker of the webinar, the critical role of vaccination to your family and community, uh, to the PMAP Cebu members and other participants on July 16, 2021. Signed, Grace S. Iligan, PhD. President Imap Sibo. Thank you. Doc, thank you so much, Doc. Thank you so much for your time. We know you're about to run for another meeting. You're already five minutes late. But thank you for enjoying us. And thank you for accepting our invitation despite very short notice. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay. okay, Sir Ian, before I'll go, I also want to give you your certificate, of course. Uh, and we're so, by the way, we're so happy huh, to have you here this afternoon because we know we've been praying last night that you will be well this afternoon. So your body is so good, I condition. Okay, wala ragyagipamate. Anyway, in behalf of PMAP Cebu, let me give you this uh, virtual certificate uh, of appreciation to you, Mr. Cesar Ian Real for your insightful conduct of uh, being our host and being our moderator for today's webinar, which is entitled Critical Role uh, of Vaccination to Our Family and to Community, to our PMAP Cebu members and to other participants given today, July 16, 2021, signed by yours truly. Sir, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for enjoying. I don't know if Ningon lang kang, you're okay. Just and <laughs> To 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 uh, no, to support us, but we are so grateful uh, that you're here with us this afternoon. Taghang kayong salamat. Uh, it's my pleasure, President Grace. 
Okay. And a special shout out lang to Avengers. Thank you so much and to the entire Team Up team for all the support and to all of you and to our speakers. Thank you so much. Okay. Stay safe, everyone. Back to you, Sir Ian. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, President Grace, no, for that very gracious uh, um, acknowledgments uh, to Dr. Jean Lorece and uh, uh, also to uh, our uh, speaker, uh, the other speaker, no, Miss St. Plonket, for uh, really um, sharing your time and your uh, your expertise uh, on talking about the critical role of vaccination uh, in our families and communities. So uh, thank you for this opportunity as well to to uh, to moderate this uh, very uh, um, very important no, that uh, na, na learning session right now for our members and our viewers. And uh, uh, guys, uh, uh, just to share with you, no, um, I just had my second dose this morning, and uh, it only took me around fifty minutes. No, I started. Uh, well. I, I did had to line up no um a, a, an hour earlier but then uh the whole start the pro those process started at around 804 in the morning and uh was completed 50 minutes after no at around 854 so so I would like to really invite all of you to uh, register under the LGU register under the PBB no or avail uh, of the company uh, vaccination program that you have and have yourself vaxxed. Okay, so that was uh, our learning session on uh, the critical role of vaccination and updates on uh, the COVID-19 uh, variants and vaccines. Uh, this has been... No? Hi everyone. I okay. I think he's back. <laughs> Sir Ian, you're back. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I, I received a call in the middle in the middle of, uh, you know, uh, the, my my talk. Yeah. Uh, again, I'd like to invite all of you to the sixth general membership meeting this coming July twenty three. Guys, uh, here we have a very interesting. Uh, topic, no, and uh, we have uh, Mr. John Tan who will talk about leadership role and directions in this pandemic time, and we also have uh, uh, Merv Neal, no, who will talk about laughter for health and happiness. No, so uh, it's been a very challenging um, first half of 2021. No, so I guess uh, this will be a time for us to. Uh, you know, to 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 laugh, no, and uh, and uh, you know, celebrate some small wins uh, as we move towards the second half of the year, and uh, and thank you so much again to all, to all those who attended uh, this uh, learning session, and uh, on behalf of President Grace Iligan and um, the whole PMAP Cebu. Um, board of Trustees, um, we would like to wish you all a safe and a blessed weekend.
services. With a good understanding of what our customers desire and providing beyond expectation, that is how Virginia Food thrives. It is that same passion for our customers that has convinced us to transform Virginia Food. Virginia Food has been in existence for more than 40 years. We are a processed meat company. We do canned meat products and frozen meat products. But because of our commitment to our customers, we have gone beyond just being a processed meat company, but become an ultimate food solution. This is our primary goal, to create the best food products for every household or business. We pride ourselves with a research and development team as we can innovate different products for different market segments. Our core strength is product innovation. Virginia Food aims to deliver new products and is capitalizing on this endeavor now more than ever. Virginia Food is grounded on four pillars. The pillar of product, supply, service, and relationship. The pillar product is represented by a research and development team as well as our quality assurance. Nothing leaves the plant without passing our standards in quality and product safety. Virginia Food began as a backyard poultry farm in Mandawe back in the 1960s. Since then, the company has grown to become one of the most exciting food manufacturers in the country. The pillar of supply is represented by our plants and operations. Here at Virginia Food, we invest in technology and innovation. We want to assure our customers that our products are efficiently produced at optimum cost. Virginia Food serves different types of households within a broad demographic, from families in the province to the millennials in their condos. We also serve various sizes of food business operation, ranging from barbecue stalls to catering companies. Virginia Food has satisfied the needs of customers from all walks of life. The pillar of service is represented by our distribution and logistics department. Since the Philippines is an archipelago within the Typhoon Belt, there are a lot of servicing disruptions, making it difficult to ship products within the country. But because we have depots across key cities in the Visayas and Mindanao, Virginia Food has maintained a level of inventory that will assure our customers of uninterrupted service. Just recently, we launched our express delivery service, bringing our quality products right at your doorstep. Our comprehensive range of food and other products now have a nationwide reach, even venturing far beyond our borders to our Southeast Asian neighbors. The pillar of relationship is represented by our sales and marketing department. This is where we forge partnerships with our customers as we try to understand their need so we can give value to them. More than just food company, we believe in cultivating a brand relationship with our customers by providing the best customer support to our partner businesses. Over the years, our business has grown exponentially, making Virginia Food one of the most profitable food manufacturers in the country. But none of that would be possible without our people, who share our passion for success. Virginia Food believes that our future starts with our people. That's why we make it a point to focus on their needs and cultivate their true potential. Virginia Food is all about innovation and quality, but our values do not end there. We give back what we can through community outreach and environment protection programs. The culture of Virginia Food are founded on different values. The values of uh, integrity, the values of passion, excellence, and creativity. Customers, quality products, efficient distribution, and good values. That's Virginia Food. Now ready to serve you even more with our latest innovation, the ultimate food solution. Basta Virginia! complex and interconnected world, there are unprecedented opportunities for innovation and far more uncertainty and risk. The COVID-19 pandemic has challenged organizations around the world to think and act quickly to tackle a set of once-in-a-lifetime circumstances. The coronavirus crisis has meant that more and more organizations are asking questions about how they become